Good afternoon. I'm uh, Anders Svensson, CFO at OS Design. And OS Design is a um, uh, company present in two different franchises in orth orthopedics. So we work in cranial and we work in spine. Present in a number of markets around the world and um, with a particular focus on the US. I'll tell you a bit more about that and, and also why we believe that we are uniquely positioned for growth. No. There you go. Just the usual disclaimer, this is a presentation, not investment advice, and I might make some forward-looking statements, and they are my opinion only. So, over to the most important stuff, why we exist. We have clinical challenges, just like we heard from the previous speaker. Uh, we provide bone replacement products. And if we look at the current situation, the current bone replacement products in the market fail to heal a wide range of skeletal defects. If I take examples from cranial surgery, and I'll use the US because that's our special interest, the most important market, and also the biggest market by far for these kind of products in the world. Now, over a million Americans suffer from traumatic brain injury every year. 250,000 of those have to undergo surgery. And in 10% of those cases, the implant that's been put in actually has to be removed, and the surgery has to be redone, most often because of infection. That's a high number. It's an expensive treatment. Um, it's expensive for the society, and of course, pain and suffering for the client, so, or the patient, I should say. Examples from spinal surgery then, well, then the figures are even worse. You would find that almost nearly 80% of Americans will suffer lower back pain, and just as I said, I've actually felt it myself, lower back pain sometime in their lives. Every year, 1.5 million spinal procedures are performed in the US alone. And 20% of those don't fuse. They don't actually have a successful outcome. That's 300,000 procedures every year in the US alone. So what you, what you want to achieve with a spinal fusion is that the the bone graft that you put in will actually fuse with the adjacent vertebrae, stabilizing the spine, alleviate pain. 300,000 cases, that doesn't happen. At least not the fusion. Now, what do we do about that? Well, we develop what we believe is the next generation of bone graft products. We, because of our material science that we use, our products stimulate the body's own healing capabilities. And I'll explain what I mean by that. So the first product, the cranial product, is an implant which is patient-specific, tailored to each, each patient's skull. Uh, it's made of a calcium phosphate, and it's reinforced with titanium mesh for durability. And the two takeaways here is, first of all, the actual calcium phosphate composition. It's been proven that it has regenerative properties, meaning that it actually stimulates the patient's own bone to regrow, which is quite amazing in itself. And the other really interesting fact here, I think, is the implant removals. 1.6% we have seen in procedures where our product has been used 1,500 cases. That's a big difference from 10% market average. Looking at the other franchise, that's the bone graft, we have an off-the-shelf product, totally different from the patient-specific implant. <coughs> this is one size fits all, more or less. It's a fully synthetic, osteocyte catalyst, but it's also nano-synthetic. So when you look at the product, it looks like a white putty or a clay that you can mold and shape any way you want to be inserted in your spine, right? But it's actually nanoporous structure, which means that it doesn't try to mimic bone on a macro level, which you would see if I scale back my arm. Rather, it, it tries to mimic the mineral crystals inside the bone. So it's more like rather than trying to be bone, it tries to be the formation of bone. Very impressive and quite unique. And also, this has been tested so far in preclinical models. 
and it has an amazing outcome, 100% fusion. And with these two, we believe that we have a product portfolio that has an ex extraordinary high market potential. Looking at the markets where we operate, we have had the cranial implant for, for a number of years. We've been in that market. We are looked upon as an innovative leader in cranial implants. And about this time last year, we decided to launch the Catalyst and move into the high margin, more scalable bone graft market. Both good markets, good market growth, high profit margin. And the combined market globally is now about three billion US dollars. Now, in this big market, we will focus on spine surgery in the US, simply because we see that as having the largest sales potential. That is where our team has the best experience and the best surgeon relationships, which is extremely important. And the part of the market that we focus on, not exclusively, we also do other things, but we focus on cervical spine and thoracolumbar spine fusion. And the US market, as you will see here, is big enough. It actually represents, in terms of spinal bone graft, it represents more than 70% of the global market. So it's big. The place to be, competitive, but the place to be, certainly. And how are we going to reach this market? Well, because we've been in the business of delivering cranial implants for a number of years, we already have an existing commercial infrastructure in place. So what we'll do now is we'll leverage this to drive further growth. So we're headquartered in Uppsala, Sweden. We have a direct sales force in major markets in Europe. Coming down to Southern Europe, we sell through agents. And we also do that in Singapore and Japan simply too small to be everywhere. Uh, in the US, we focused particularly to build a good sales force, direct sales force, but with the structure of the American market, we actually also go through sales agents. That's just the way the market operates. And what sort of growth am I talking about? <clears throat> I'm not talking about moderate growth, but rather rapid, accelerating growth. We recently published our Q2 report, where we presented record sales quarter, 63% growth for the group, exponential growth of 155% in the US, and given that the US is the most important market in the world, that's pretty good news. We also launched our cranial product in Japan, which actually outside the US is the, probably the second biggest market for these kind of products. And we recorded our first sales. We have been trying to do this for some time, but the pandemic restrictions in Japan have been pretty severe, so <clears throat> at last, we're there. And we also treated the first 100 patients with our new Ostesign Catalyst in the US. And if I can stay in the US just for a minute, <clears throat> this is a chart showing our sales in the US. And every bar is 12-month rolling sales. And as you can see here, for two years, from early 19 to 21, <clears throat> we had growth, but moderate growth. That's also a bit of a plateau effect during the pandemic. But we spent this time to prepare for the next step honing the skills of the sales force, revamping it a bit, and of course adding the catalyst to the product program. And something has happened in the last 12 months. It has changed from moderate growth to exponential growth. And, and I believe that's not the end of it. I believe this is going to continue. Continued acceleration, which I can't prove because it hasn't happened yet, but we certainly believe that's what we see. So in summary, Ostesign, uniquely positioned for growth for the following reasons. High unmet clinical need. Simply, the other products on the market aren't good enough, and uh, that leads to a poor clinical outcome. We have the next generation bone replacement products, and we keep developing them. We're using material science in a way that our products manage to stimulate the body's own healing capabilities, vastly improving clinical outcome for the patient. You can see from the market size I showed you, we have an extensive growth potential. Three billion US dollar market, high margin in the market, solid growth. And we have established a very ambitious growth strategy. And you can see from the Q2 numbers, we're already delivering to that ambition. Our products have exceptional performance. Clinically, on the, on the cranial product, 
with extremely low explantation rate of 1.6%. Um, on the catalyst, preclinical yet, uh, but fantastic results. And soon after we launched the product last year, we put clinical programs in place in order to prove clinical outcome. And these are currently underway. And last but not least, we have a strong and growing commercial presence. We have that in the US, which is our most important market. We have a good coverage in Europe and in selected Asian countries. And we will now leverage that presence to drive further growth. And that was really what I wanted to say about OS design. And uh, I'm happy to try to answer any questions you might have, but I'm the CFO, not the CTO. So Thank you so happens. much. Yeah, so do we have any questions for the CFO? <laughs> Uh, yes, I have a question regarding the growth this year. Yep. Um, uh, is both segments growing in the same pace, or is it uh, the same catalysts? Or no, well, in our reports we don't actually split them up yet. We're about to do that in the next report. <clears throat> but um, catalyst started in August, September last year, and it's growing exponentially. So that's made a big difference. I think Jonas had a question. Thank you for a great presentation. Thank you. Um, uh, I was curious, you said something that you're simply too small to be everywhere. So <laughs> you have a, a well, a two, two type of model with distributors and also direct sales. Yeah. But What's the overall wi vision of OS design? Is it to become a global giant on your own force, or is it to be bought, perhaps? Well, we don't have a strategy to be bought, <coughs> but um, but if that happens, that's so be it. Now, I don't think giant is that's that's aiming a bit high, perhaps. <coughs> I mean, this is a especially the cranial market is, is a niche market, so you'll never become a giant in that market. I don't think you need to have other products as well. But the bone graft, we have potential to be it. But we've selected markets based on where we can get clearance initially and where we see a good potential, good prices, large number of procedures. Another um, one? Hmm? What, what is your edge over your competitors? Is it the so far seemingly 100% fusion or are there other competitive advantages? If you just look at the product features i would say yeah that is the that is the edge it's those those results even preclinical they are <coughs> uh, they are on par with the absolute best products on the us market which aren't even bone grafts <coughs> uh, if you compare with similar bone graft products this is way beyond what anyone else has achieved so yeah that that i'd say would be the absolute product edge but there's there's no difference in the actual procedure the oper operation as such? No. You'll find a, a, a normal hospital in the US would probably have three or four different bone graft products sitting on the shelf. So the trick is to get in there and be one of those and hopefully the one they choose most often. Uh, are you okay? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I just had um, a question on can you, can you say again why the revision rate is so low as compared to the closest competitor? Well, why? Why is why? Why is it? Is it the? the I mean, it must be the substance of the crystal. It's it's hard to with with a cranial implant. You you mean? Yeah. Say again. Yeah, with a cranial implant. Yeah, the yeah. cranial implant, please. Yeah. Well, it's it's hard to say for sure, but I certainly believe, or we believe, that it's because uh, it's hard to prove exactly why, but. Um, the other methods of doing this is either using the patient's old bone that you've removed, and that causes easily a lot of infections. The other methods, are, which are the most common ones, are a piece of plastic or metal. And obviously they might protect the skull, but they don't have any properties, no regenerative properties. It's just a dead piece protecting your skull. Whereas our, cranium, sorry, our calcium phosphate has properties that that are as close to the original skull as possible. Right, so there must be a reason, but it's slow, somewhat unclear. But there's nothing antibacterial, there's nothing, you know, the... No. <coughs> um, there are certain metals, for instance, that could um, avoid... I think the material in itself is, is better suited for, for the human environment, because it's more akin to the skull itself. 
And then, of course, we use sterilization methods and stuff like that, and we have other, other um, tools to help the, the surgeon achieve the best results. <coughs> but I would still say that it's the material, it's the calcium phosphate composition that's the, the secret source. And, and they started operating again now, right? So it seems like they lost this, the, the quarterly numbers look I could. Yeah, started The last operating. one, I mean, yeah. What do you mean, started operating? Yeah, yeah they, they, it seemed like with the COVID and the lockdowns and uh, you had some problems and now it seems to be taking off. Yeah, yeah, that was Japan. Japan that was closed Japan. for a year. So we, we, we were ready to go into Japan about a year ago, but we, could, we couldn't. We couldn't fly there, we couldn't start any sales operations. But uh, we, um, overall, we've been selling all along. It's just that we sold less during the pandemic. Good. Hi, I, Hi. I also have a question on the cranial uh, implant and the regenerative aspect. Um, because that sounds great, that the bone is regenerating. But um, I'm like, if you put something in the skull that is regenerative and in enforced environment where cells can regrow, uh, have you studied or is there any risk of like potentially developing like cranial cancer or some other disease due to high proliferacy? Diversity in the in the tissue, and is that an aspect that we we'll looked at? Yeah, it, it's nothing we've seen, in and like I said, it's, this is based on this is data from early this year, and it's based on 1,500 procedures with our product, and we haven't seen anything like that. What we see is that the more we test, the rate goes down, and and the only thing I can think of is that it's it's such a it's such a perfect match with the skull that if it stays long enough, it'll sort of It'll stick. It'll grow. It'll grow solid there. And if you then have to remove it, you might have to have more work removing it than if you had another implant. But hopefully, you won't have to. Any more questions? Yeah, I have one, um, and it seems like you believe that this momentum is uh, just about to. Uh, we've, that you just got it started. Why do you believe that? Can you give us some more flavor? <laughs> If I didn't believe that, I should probably go work somewhere else, right? <laughs> yeah, no, well, we have done what we believe are the right things now for one and a half years, and we just haven't seen it in the figures. Because first we had the pandemic, and then for us to be able to sell, we have to get into the hospitals, into the operation room. Otherwise, we can't sell. And that was impossible for quite some time, but closed down. And then when it started to alleviate, we got the Omicron variant. Um, which meant that the hospitals weren't as packed, but there was no staff. They were all homesick or potentially sick or their spouse was sick or the kids, you know. And we, we, don't, we haven't seen this coming back to normal yet. <clears throat> At worst, in January last year, it went down to about 50% capacity. Now it started moving up, so we see it maybe at 70% now. So there should be an extremely high need of procedures that weren't taking place during the pandemic, but there's just not enough staff in the world to catch up. It's going to take a long time. And moving a little further, I mean, you've got two parts of the body covered now. Is there any easy way to cover the whole <laughs> part of the body with your products or, or more uh, yeah, acquisitions? Yeah. Now, with the bone graft that we have, we actually cover more parts. These are the parts we focus on. I mean, apart from the head, the skull, we focus on two parts of the, of the spine. And we can also, we do right now, do procedures in in foot and ankle, and we could do it in extremities as well. That's not a problem. It just hasn't been the main focus of the product yet. All right, thank you. Thank you. I think that's all the time we had. Thank you so much for coming. Much. Pleasure.